when did you attend the YMCA? What, uh, 23, uh, 1932, roughly, around about that. Mm. And the age was? Nine. And what made you attend the YMCA? For what reasons did you well, go? I couldn't do anything else, could I? I lived there. <laughs> Um, you, you say you lived there. Your father played a role, I believe, in, in the YMCA. And well, he, he lived on, on the premises, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he, I suppose he was a caretaker at first, mm -hmm. yeah, and looked after things, you know. Mm -hmm. And he lived on the premises, of course. And mm. where, where was the living accommodation in the, in the that YMCA? That was at 44 Irish Street, the, the house. And then later on, a good bit later on, one of the secretaries that was there came to live there, and we went upstairs into uh, above Routledge's uh, sweet shop, you know. Okay, yes. Yeah, and lived in a flat upstairs there. Right. Mm. Okay. And do you, what what are your memories as as a child? Well, the only thing that sticks out is um, I I used to play table tennis and badminton, of course, and for the county. And um, Richard Bergman, the world table tennis champion, he came to Whitehaven. And so they sent down to the YMCA to see if I could come up and give him a game. Wow. So I did, of course. And then he stayed in Whitehaven for a few weeks and we used to practice together in the gym. That's one thing I remember. Wow, what an honour. Uh, May I ask who won the first? The first match that you played. Oh God, no! We really <laughs> him, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And how did you feel being so young and obviously meeting? Well, I would be sixteen then. then. Was it? Was I? Would I be around about there? Six, I think. Yeah. There was another one, Barner. I mean, you probably not know them. He, he was a, with him at, at times, and he was a you know a sort of professional table tennis player as well. Is there any other particular memories that you remember? Apart from the war, I don't know. Uh, they played quite a big part in the war. They used to look after the, uh, for the fighters, troops. They must have looked after hundreds of them, you know, put them up for the night. Well, uh, apart from putting them up at night, you know, and giving them, mum used to give them a breakfast in the morning, if they were stuck, you know, and... Uh, that's about all that, because I was in the army at the same time. I wasn't there much then. Okay. Yeah. So that's what, from about mm, 1940, around about right. 39, mm -hmm. 40, 40. And were they British troops that you yes, know? Yes, they yeah. were. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they maybe be Australians mm -hmm. or New Zealanders, you know, yes. any, any British troops that, or otherwise. And of course, I wasn't there much then. I was away for five years. And. Uh, I don't know who would, uh, what happened then, you know, because a lot of the members and that would be away in the war and and that sort of thing. Yeah. Did you attend the, the YMCA when you returned from the war, Mr. Hetherington? Well, I still live there, didn't I? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I've come back to that, yeah. I don't know how many members were killed during the war. Probably a few, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I nearly didn't return. Oh, really? Uh, no, I was in Africa in the first army, and then we invaded Sicily after that. And then we went and we invaded Italy, and I was wounded in Italy. And what, I was in hospital about six months. Yeah. Oh, and then I was downgraded and just put my time in, more or less, till the end of the war. and been. Well, I was in the clerical office, you know, the court marshal's office, actually. Yeah. Can you remember what your dad did when you retired? You know, what time did he open up? Was it open every day? Well, yes, it was, open. well, more or less. I when he opened at 10 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and he closed at 10 o'clock at night. I think uh, the minimum age would be about 18 when at first. Okay. You know, and then the boys club opened up. Mm -hmm. That was later, you know. That's when we joined the boys club, you know, and oh. I joined, yeah. But, uh, and when did women um, start? And there was a women's auxiliary there. When he went in the front door there and he went up the stairs mm -hmm. 
and then there was a lady's cloakroom right at the first step, and then he went up again, and the lady's auxiliary was on the left, the room on the left, but they weren't there all the time, they only sort of, probably a couple of days a week, uh, nights or yeah. something, you know. Did they rent the room out? They, or? they must have done, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. On the right, as you walked in, there was what's called the parlour, mm -hmm. and there was a, I don't know, is it now an organ or a piano, and uh, the Quakers used to have this on a Sunday, they used to attend and have their services in there, wow. yeah, and then uh, going on from there, you went up some little stairs into the office, there was an office there, and a place where they washed up and you know, and things. And then, of course, next door was the toilets and showers mm -hmm. they had next. And then you went through into the gymnasium. Uh, coming out of the gymnasium, back again, there was a table tennis room. And then downstairs, next to that, there was you went downstairs into the boilers, you know, that did all the central heating, okay. was downstairs, right. down there. And then he came back up. Uh, and as you came in, on the left was what they called the reading room, and they had newspapers and that and there and uh, things, you know. And up the stairs you went, as I said, there was the ladies' cloak room, and then the ladies' auxiliary room, mm -hmm. and then there was the billiard room, there was two billiard tables in there. And uh, before you went in the billiard room, there was a few steps up, and then what they called the lounge. Well, I think there was a dartboard in there, and yeah. odds and ends, where they had probably whist drives. Maybe they had those in the uh, in the gym, but they used to have whist drives there. Right, okay. Yeah. It, it's quite amazing how you describe the building, because we, we've, we've spoke to people who went later on, and it's amazing how the rooms have changed, changed. into, uh, into uh, what they were. Uh, yeah. So, for example, the, the meeting room that you describe became a coffee bar, Oh, um, and uh -huh. the, the, the steps that you describe up, yeah. um, that was actually t uh, cut off and that was the kitchen area for the coffee bar and then they used to put tables out. Oh, and there was a big, so oh, it was yeah. still a meeting place, you know, the meeting room. Mm -hmm. But the billiard room seems to always have been the billiard, billiard room. room. Two yeah. billiard tables there, yeah. Can you tell me what else went on in the YMCA? I know you, you've talked about what went on in various rooms. Well, they've had whist drives and all of that. Um, uh, oh, we had the cricket team. Mm -hmm. We used to play, you know, cricket. What else did we do? There was a badminton mm -hmm. club, of course. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anyone that you used to knock around with? Yes, well, there was uh, Warwick Atkinson. They had the, uh, her father had the uh, grocer shop in Roper Street. Okay. And there was Bunty Pellet, lived a few doors of the... His dad was at the, um, what, down on the docks, the electricity, the electricity station. Uh, you know, uh, at, in the olden days, the electricity was sort of made down there, yes. these things, and he, that was his father. Uh, there was Joey Routledge from the mm -hmm. shop. I mean, his brother was elderly, well, older than him. Yeah. And Ronald West, he was from the butcher's shop in the marketplace. Was it like a get together and you just met yeah, well friends? We, we used to play table tennis and billiards and snooker and you know that's meeting place sort of thing and mess about. Well the cricket team uh, was uh, you know you had to be able to play cricket. Yes. We used to go and play at St B's and different places and the same with badminton we used to play sometimes at Carlisle and, and uh, Millham and Round about that, you know, okay. the table tennis. I suppose we played, uh, you know, uh, different people, mm -hmm. and different clubs. Mm. What did you wear? What were your fashions when you were oh. when you were there? Oh dear God, <laughs> I don't know what we used to wear. Grey trousers. What did they call them then? Flannels. 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 Grey flannels. Were they long or short? Or? Well, they long. Long yeah, at that age. Yeah. And with that, would it have been a, a shirt of some form, or? Yes, it would be a shirt, and what? Well, they just use the same thing as pullovers. And yeah. You know, not, yeah. not a lot of difference. Trousers would be wider then. There wasn't any jeans. Yes. Yeah. Do 
did you listen to any music there? Was there any way of listening to music in the YMCA? I don't think so. Apart from when there was a dance, well, yeah. I, I know remember. you mentioned a piano. Do you remember anyone playing it or? Well, so some of the members would play it, you know, and uh, maybe have a sing song around it or yeah. something like that. Was there any other staff that you remember that helped out? Well, uh, I had a sister, and she, I suppose, she helped a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was only about one cleaner used to come in, a woman cleaner at that time. What was your sister's name? Doris. Doris. Doris and Morris. And when when you went away with with your teams, with your sports teams, how how was that? Was it on train, or did you get a coach, or? Oh, we probably went on. I don't know. Probably went on the bus to St. Peter's. Yeah. Or, you know, because people didn't have their cars and that. That's thing, right. You know. If there was a piece of advice you could give the young of today, the youth of today, God. what would it be? <laughs> oh dear, dear, I don't know. I'm not used to giving advice. Be kind to other people. Uh, that would be one thing. You know, there's far too much. I don't know. Awful things go on these days. You know, it, it takes a bit of understanding because. In our day, it wasn't like that somehow. It 